Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today I wanted to talk about the different bagged products that you can buy because it's very confusing to most of us, even if you've been gardening for a long time. So the idea would be is you need to fill a couple of raised beds, maybe some containers. What products are you going to buy? And I kind of just threw them out there because it's chaotic. When you go into a store, you see all the different prices, different sizes, different names. So let's start with breaking down the names. I'll tell you how to use them, and then I'll go over the cheapest way to really fill a raised bed. Now the products you can buy are basically broken into, I guess, four areas. You have plain old topsoil, which is the cheapest and probably the worst for your garden bed. You can still amend it and grow in it, but it's just dirt and sand. There's not much in there. There's no peat moss, there's no shredded wood. There's nothing in there that gives it any kind of structure, no organic matter. So you have topsoil, and you use that really for filling holes, like in your lawn or something like that. And then you go to a product that is called, if you look on this one, it's all-purpose in-ground soil, it specifically says ground soil, garden soil. Both of those are called garden soil. That's the difference. But they're used for in-ground, so that would be something that you would throw into a raised bed you wouldn't necessarily use it for a container, but I've used it for a container and it works perfectly fine. So you have topsoil, and then you have ground soil, or you have garden soil. That's the second category. Third category is potting mix. And as we go up in categories, they become a little bit more expensive. Potting mix is basically your garden soil right there with a bunch of peat moss in there or shredded hardwood or cocoa core mixed into there. So it's lighter, holds water, it's better for uh, containers, that's why they call it a potting mix. Those are the three main categories. Somewhere in between ground soil, garden soil, and topsoil, you can find premium topsoil. That means they added in some peat moss. And then there's a fifth category technically that's called raised bed soil or raised bed mix. You don't need that. What you really need to fill your raised beds is somewhere right around here. You could use potting mix if you want to spend more money. You could use plain old garden soil. And you could even use topsoil mixed with peat moss. What you really wouldn't want to do is you wouldn't want to, would not want to use topsoil or garden soil in your pots. You would want to use a potting mix or you would want to amend the garden soil. So let's talk about how I amend and how I make my own raised bed mix, my own potting mix. And the whole key is that. That is a two cubic foot bale of sphagnum peat moss, finely shredded. It's about $13. It goes a long way where with these things, you're paying anywhere from maybe two bucks for the cheap topsoil all the way up to $11.95, $12.95 for a bag of potting mix, depending on the size depending on how much they say it's organic and other stuff they throw in. So you can buy whatever bagged mix you want that you can afford and then you add in peat moss. And generally speaking it's about 50% peat moss, 25, I'm sorry, 50% of topsoil if you're using the lower end stuff and that's a 50-50 mix that will work. If you're going with the garden soil you throw in the garden soil, maybe add in, you know, one third peat moss. That will give it more organic, or that will give it more organic matter, organic matter to hold water, have structure, but it doesn't have any nutritional value. We'll talk about nutrition in a second. And then potting mix, you don't really have to spend the money on that. You can make your own potting mix. 50% garden soil, 50% peat moss. That will go into your containers. That's a great potting mix. If you're putting the garden soil into your raised bed, that's when I say add in about a third of peat moss. And I think you kind of get the idea. By adding in the more inexpensive product to buy, the two cubic feet of peat moss, it's about 13 bucks here in the States. I'm in Maryland Zone 7. You can really extend your budget because that will fill up a whole lot of space. For instance, if that's been used, but say a two cubic foot thing of peat moss I would put that all in here and then rather than go and buy anything this is the cheapest way to do it I go out to my garden 
where my flower beds are and wherever I have to trench and dig um, another two or three inches between where I'm putting in my peat moss for my flower beds and the lawn I save all that dirt I bring it over here mix that with 50% peat moss fill my beds I'm good to go so that covers the different products you can use to fill the bed now peat moss adds some structure and sponginess to your soil it holds water but it doesn't have any real nutritional value so then you go over to the next group it's the compost or the manures so you have something like this that's compost and manure that's a 0 0.05 0 0.05 0 0.05 NP and K the problem with the bagged compost and manures is you don't know if they're fully broken down and if they're not fully broken down and you put them on top of your soil like that's a 12 inch bed there if we mixed in the compost on the top and we planted within a couple of weeks there's going to be a nitrogen problem because bacteria is going to be trying to break down your compost and your manures it's going to be taking nitrogen from your plants your plants are going to struggle so when you're putting compost into your bed that's why they say it's good to do it in the fall let them break down do whatever they got to do over late fall winter early spring and then you plant into it but you can get around it in a couple of ways we'll go over that in a second you can buy something that's called uh, humus and manure that's a leaf grow product that's an organic uh, leaves and some sticks broken down it's great for uh, structure of your soil great for soil life that's typically found in Maryland different states may have their own products and then you can buy a more expensive manure and this is from black cow don't specifically recommend them but this product is broken down nicely it's composted down nicely and it's almost ready to use right in your garden so this I may put on top of my soil but let's just treat compost as we don't know how much it's been broken down or composted down so get to know your product so black cow I'm used to using that's a pretty good product but if we don't know how much it's composted down, how much it's broken down, we don't want to mix it through our soil. We don't want to mix it on the top of the soil. So pick up whatever bag is least expensive and you would just break like that 40 pound bag right into there, cover the bottom, cover over the wood there. Same thing with the other cow manures, break it down, the leaf grow, break it down, put it on the bottom and then we're going to put all of our soil on top. And that's really setting up a first year bed it'll work that way things will be okay when you're setting up the soil in other videos I'll talk about organic fertilizer water soluble fertilizers but with respect to filling and going from a space like this with nothing in there to having to spend money to buy these different products this is what they do this is what they are this is how much they cost so if you can two cubic feet the two cubic foot bales of peat moss 50% peat moss 50% of the earth from around your area will be the least expensive way. Next least expensive way is 50% peat moss using topsoil. And then you can get to be, uh, it can be a little bit more expensive when you start using the garden soils, the ground soils, or the potting mix. And that's all up to your budget. I know we all have different budgets and you may want to do it different ways. If you're comfortable with just buying 40 bags of the garden soil, go ahead and do that. If you want to save some money the peat moss really goes a long way you can also save a lot of money by making your own potting mix because that's almost twice as much the potting mix right there as the garden soil so by the garden soil adding 50 percent peat moss you've just built your own potting mix and then if you're using compost or manures i recommend when you're first setting it up these beds are 12 inches and 10 inches put it down on the bottom if you're using frames that are six inches eight inches or smaller I would really not use the compost unless you know you're not planning for a good 90 days or so. Hope this explains the different products that you're going to see in stores. It can be confusing, but they all really start with right back there, topsoil, peat moss, shredded wood, sometimes cocoa core, and they just blend in those things and they work their way up to the potting mix. And then the potting mix they may put in vermiculite or um, perlite. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and hopefully this helps you have a little bit more confidence when you're spending money at the big box stores to fill your raised beds and containers.